This podcast is brought to you by the new album by John Walker called Impending Blue. Go listen now. Stream it on repeat, even if you're not in the room. I don't care. Thank you. This book is also called Podcast, brought to you by everythingismoving.amazon.com. <laughs> Now, please welcome Victoria Asher to the podcast. Hello, Victoria. Hello, John. How's it going? (laughs) Good. How are you? Is this the first podcast you've ever done? Uh, no, it's not, actually. I did one for my friend Ryan Dune one time. Oh, cool. I think you've met Ryan. Maybe. Right? Eh. Maybe. How did you get into music? Um, well, I always did music since I was a kid, but I hated it. <laughs> I was forced to take piano lessons from my mom, which usually meant that I just slammed my head against the keys and complained that I didn't want to play. Um, but, uh, then when I was 14 or so, I wanted to have a band and wanted to restudy piano. And so I did that, but, uh, I actually was always doing film originally. And then I used to upload my songs to MySpace that I would just kind of like do on the side when I was bored and Gabe from Cobra Starship found me through MySpace, asked me to join the band Thought I'd go on tour for maybe a month, and it became 10 years. What did these songs on MySpace sound like? Um, They're still on there, funny enough. I actually looked up my old MySpace page the other day. Um, I don't know, just like little kind of pop indie songs, I guess, that I wrote with friends and would just kind of upload when I was bored. And um, the page was totally inactive is the funny part. Like, I never checked it anymore. And um, I'm glad I didn't delete it because that's how Gabe found me. Yeah, how do you think he found your profile? He was just searching for female keyboardists in New York on MySpace. And he came across my page. And Alex Suarez in the band, he knew me through my boyfriend at the time. And so when Gabe, like, showed my page to the rest of the guys... He was like, oh, shit, I can get in touch with that girl. Blah, blah, blah. Got in touch with me. Bada bing, bada boom. Wow. Who knew? Gabe took me out for a night in New York before approving me to be in the band to see how well I could hang. Where did you Where did you guys go? We went to several different clubs in the East Village, and he took me to this illegal, um, <laughs> this illegal gambling place in New York that was like in some dude's apartment and you had to have this special membership card that they printed out in the front and went into the back and the guy that was a card dealer had no fingers. It was crazy. He had these little nubs on his hands and he handed out the cards perfectly as if he had fingers. It's pretty awesome. Wow. Your typical job interview. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) And we we went to this this apartment, by the way, at like three in the morning and stayed there until about six. And then the next day, Gabe was like, you're in the band. <laughs> um, Did this make you more or less excited to join the band? No, I was super psyched. I thought it was really fun. Like we had a dance off in the club and everything. Like he really was putting me to the test to see how well I could hang. And he, you know, tried being offensive and stuff like that. And I just, you know, kind of gave him attitude back anytime he was and he knew that I could deal with being on tour I guess holy cow so your first band was Cobra Mm -hmm. Starship well my first band was called Optimo when I was 15 years old and what happened to that uh we played a bunch of shows actually and I was a lead singer and um and then I moved to New York and we just stopped playing music but it was fun Did you study film in New York? Yeah. So I moved to New York. I always knew I wanted to live in New York, and I moved there to uh, go to school at NYU. I was actually, I did homeschooling and graduated a year and a half early from 
uh, high school. And um, during that time, though, the second I started doing homeschooling was when I started uh, taking cues more seriously and playing music. But I always wanted to direct and film, so I'm surprised that music was the thing that took off. But. Yeah, what was film school like? Uh, film school I wasn't that blown away with, to be honest. I was thinking that the second I'd go to college that, you know, it'd be like a whole new world and I'd be with all these sweet people that were kind of on the same page as me. But, um, I found that I was really (laughs) disappointed when I first went there and felt like I didn't fit in just as much. I didn't fit in in high school and, uh, thought the kids were kind of pretentious and, uh, the teachers were not nearly as eye-opening or as inspiring as I hoped they would be. Um, I found that like working for people in film instead was more beneficial than actually studying film. So did you finish film school? No, I took a quote leave of absence never to return. (laughs) That's when you joined the band. (laughs) Yeah. But I also took a leave of absence a a previous time before that because I worked for the director, Michelle Gondry, and then I worked for Robert Downey Jr. And uh, that was when I was, like, I I had taken some time off of school. And then Gabe takes you out. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. That's such a funny story. I never heard that. What, the him take, force me to, to (coughs) test, hey, Bill, shush, uh, testing me to see if I could hang or? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I could have, I would have passed the test. (laughs) Yeah, probably not. (laughs) <laughs> but I feel like, well, I don't know. I mean, I think he would have been just as, you know, I mean, I think a lot of girls would have left with the behavior that came out that Like night. the illegal gambling clubs. Uh, and dance offs and him just being completely insane. And, uh, but yeah, I thought it was really fun. And I was like, I want to work with this guy. He was completely out of his mind. Cobra Starship was already a band, and they were already touring. So when you joined, what was that like? Uh, I was hated on for the first tour quite a bit. Well, actually, it was a mixture. There was like, well, I remember the I remember the worst thing was the first photo that got released of us. It was like the first press photo. We went to some party, and it was my birthday because um, I joined the band right on my. 21st birthday, I think. Yeah, I guess yeah, it was my 21st birthday, I guess. And um, we went out for my for my birthday. We it was like some like Bam Majara, whatever. What's that guy's name from Jackass? It's close enough. Majara, Majara. I don't know. Um, it was some birthday party that he had, and like there was like the first pro- photo of us all taken. And I didn't know anything about Live Journal or any of that stuff. And, oh, my God, I discovered a whole new world from joining the band. And everyone was hating on me and saying how hideous I was and saying that I looked like William Beckett that had been bleached or something. And (laughs) Yeah, I don't think you're supposed to read those comments. (laughs) Well, I spiraled and I read all of them. And I was so upset because I never wanted to be – I never wanted attention on me. Like, I – was always so shy when I was a kid and I wanted to be a director so that I'd be behind the scenes instead of kind of like in the forefront of anything. So to suddenly get attention and have people picking apart how I looked and, and was like really bummed me out. I didn't think that I, like I had kind of second guesses of like if I should join the band or not. Um, but then I toughened up and dealt with being on stage and then ended up liking it. So when you joined, you took some photos that you guys basically go right out on tour right away yeah so when i when i got asked to join it was like oh like do you want to join this tour we're gonna first do this tour with i think yeah it was cartel and boys like girls and then fallout boy and um fallout boy i'm well fallout boy panic disco all of all of that scene was not my scene at all so i was like i don't know i was like this is not the type of music i've like normally listened to and um and then I decided to join and then like ended up loving all that music, which was awesome. How many albums did Cobra end up putting out? Oh man. <laughs> How many did we put? Out? Uh, <laughs> I guess I can Google it. Three, four. 
I don't remember. <laughs> and then what the hell happened? Something like that. Um, we all ended up hating each other, and we had a horrible fight and decided to break up. I'm just kidding. That happens a lot, huh? <laughs> that usually happens to most bands, but it's actually not what happened with us. Um, I think just everyone's kind of priorities changed and that, like, um, Ryland and Alex, they wanted to be at home more and be in the studio and producing. Um, Gabe wanted to have a family and be in one place. And I wanted to keep on touring. So, um, so I, you lost. Yeah, I, I lost the battle. Um, I, I wanted to, I mean, we, we, de- we took like a long break from touring and we definitely needed that break. Like all of us were kind of going crazy. Like, I mean, you know how it is. Like if you're just touring that much, it's just exhausting. And, um, I don't know. And like, you're so it's, it's weird because you'll be like surrounded by so many people, but you've also kind of never felt so lonely. At least that was my experience was, uh, I always found touring to be like very lonely and like an emotional roller coaster, and that you're like on stage playing to people and getting all this kind of adoring energy from people. And then you leave the stage and it's like, uh, what do I have now <laughs> for me anyway? And this was, this was pre Instagram. Yeah, exactly. Although there was Instagram for some of our touring. We, I remember when we did, uh, yeah, we were touring in South America around 2011. Um, I have like my first Instagram posts were from that tour with Justin Bieber. Um, but I just wish I had been smarter about it and actually uploaded stuff and taken advantage of the Instagram craze. <laughs> yeah, I don't think anybody really knew what it was supposed to be used for when it first came out i don't think we still really know exactly what's happening well i think now it's just so clearly like this promotional tool for something well i I think it's cooler when you're using it to promote something that you're actually making but you know some people are just promoting their face so i don't know yeah instagram uh, i have such a love-hate relationship with instagram i think i hate it actually um, I find that it causes so much anxiety for me and depression and like, and yeah, like, I don't know, being in a relationship with someone and being on Instagram, it's, ugh, I don't like it. You've tried to limit your time. How does that go? Uh, good for the most part, but I've been using it again a lot lately. And, uh, that's part of why, for example, that's why I didn't go on my jog today because I just spent too much time on Instagram. And then I suddenly was like, Oh, I don't have time to do a job. Oh, I'm going to talk to John at this time. Uh. So, um, I missed doing productive things right. because I was scrolling through bullshit. I think I find that's the problem is that there's usually some morsel of information in that 20 minute scroll that you walk away with. I wish we could just refine that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, I wish that I could even say that it was 20 minutes, you know, it's like, I bet I was on Instagram for about an hour before we talked and yeah, I'll just get like, I'll, I'll think that I'm on it for a short amount of time. And then suddenly I'll be like, Oh my God, I just wasted an hour of my of my day scrolling through stuff that really didn't like add any kind of value to my life in any shape or form. Sure. I find it's just a lot of like comparing or, you know, getting threatened by things or I don't know. Yeah, I think a lot of people would agree that it's kind of detrimental to mental health, but yet we're so addicted to it. Addicted to it. Yeah, why do you think that is? I th- well, I mean, I think receiving likes or comments, there's like some kind of drug kind of thing related to that, of like this, you know, this gratification from like people adoring you or, or something, or like, oh, how many likes are, are people going to be engaged with this or whatever there's I think there's something to that but um I don't know it's weird because because I I like because my rule before too was that I was kind of like I would just upload something and then I would delete Instagram from my my phone so that I wouldn't look at it because I find that like the looking through stuff gets really bad for me yeah and uh, on, on the other end of the spectrum it's great as a tool to be able to connect with people without having to be on tour constantly. Totally. Then at the same time, are we just perpetuating the insanity? Yeah. 
may be. I think, I think, well, I mean, I think too that, you know, we're replacing real interaction with, with that. Then instead it's like, you know, I can know so much about someyone's life. Cause like, Oh, I've, I see they're updating all this stuff, but it's probably very different when you're actually hanging out in person. And Yeah. It's strange. We're trying to figure out exactly what social media is supposed to be. Yeah. I just can't tell what things, I mean, obviously it's very clear that my following likes any kind of throwback stuff. That's clear. Cause they still, you know, think of me mostly as Victoria from Cobra Starship. But, um, I don't know. I just find like there's weird things that will get a lot of engagement and I don't know. I can't, all of it's so weird. Social media is annoying. <laughs> Um, the other thing that's annoying is that I'm losing my voice. I don't know if you can hear, but um, over the last year, I've been severely losing my voice. And uh, when I want to try and be doing shows, that's really a nightmare. <laughs> I quit smoking to help my voice, and instead I've lost my voice. So I've been going to like a vocal coach and trying to rehabilitate my voice, but it's been it's been very difficult. Yeah, that app that you got to quit smoking is pretty cool. You post once in a while, like how long it's been and how much money you've saved. How long has it been? Uh, it'll be a year in four days, I think. Yeah, That's amazing. I quit for a year again before the previous time, and uh, annoyingly, I was so done with it too. But all it took was me dating someone that was a smoker and just one night of like having a few drinks and, you know, those long romantic talks outside and, oh, just give me one of those cigarettes. And then I started again. It was like I had the cigarette and immediately the next morning it was like the addict had woken up again. And I was like, ah, that cigarette kind of seemed like it was gross at the time. But actually, I think you should start getting into that again. <laughs> so, um, but this time around, I'm at least in a relationship with someone that's very anti-smoking and used to be a smoker himself. So that's good. Yeah. I don't see myself smoking again is my point. No, we just got to work on limiting Instagram. The thing that I think is weird though, is that I, I don't know if you do this, but like I'll grab my phone and just automatically go to Instagram. Will you do that or no? Yeah. You're better with your phone though. I feel like, I mean, you had like a flip phone when we were first hanging out. Yeah. I converted to a smartphone a couple years ago. Well, so have, have you converted to being the smartphone addict like everyone else? It comes and goes. When I put my EP out, I was on it for like a month straight, basically, you know, between promoting it and engaging mm -hmm. with people. And, but, uh, yeah, I do try to consciously keep it in a place where I'm not just going to pick it up instinctively. And I still, and I still right. do it anyways, even though I'm trying to be mindful about it. Yeah. I keep trying to just leave it places and not have it with me as much. Yeah. Uh, the thing that's crazy is that I just, I see how like, so for example, with my boyfriend, Trent, it's like when we were first dating, he didn't care at all about social media and never was on it. And I thought that was so cool. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, I love you. Like he's never touching his phone. And then, you know, he did this music video and got a lot of followers. And so now people are very engaged. And of course he's taking advantage of it. Like you should. And, um, but it's, you know, you immediately when you get wrapped up into that world of like people being engaged with your stuff and figuring out what should I post today and stuff like that, you're just on your phone so much, you know? And I, I just, it's crazy how you see it become such like an addictive thing. I'm guilty of it. Everyone's guilty of it. Well, do you do the screen time thing? Uh, it It's on my phone, yeah. I see it. I don't actively review it, but it pops up once in a while as a kind of weird guilt trip. Because mm. I, I, I found it very helpful to just keeping track on how long you've actually been on it. Um. I'm pretty into it. <laughs> what is your average screen time? Uh, I don't remember. I'd have to look that up. I just know that I have it. I have it limited on social media. Oh, so it'll it's pop like up. It'll I'm allowed a notification to... when you hit your time. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, but the hard part is that Trent and I talk pretty much exclusively through Instagram Messenger. So that's the only thing that's been annoying. I keep trying to like get him to just 
text regularly or be on WhatsApp. He has a, he has an Android. <laughs> and so for whatever reason, it's just much easier on Instagram messenger. That's weird, but it's annoying because then that brings me back to the app all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. But uh, anyway, sorry. I don't know how this came became such an Instagram. No, it's talk. great. I feel like I feel like me and you both kind of have similar situations where we have this following, and uh, it's really nice to have, but it's also conflicting, and it is a weird world for yeah. everybody to navigate. I think that's what's nice about a podcast like this is actually just getting to hear people talk, and it's a little bit more mm-hmm. real. I miss you guys. Like, when was the last time I saw you guys? Uh, I saw you at Trent's birthday. Yeah. Oh yeah. Besides that, yeah. Um, yeah, we live far away now. It's hard. I know. We'll have to. We still got to do that double date. I was just about to say, when you do the double date, Trent's always bringing yeah. it up too. We need to actually make that happen. Yeah. What else is going on with you? You started a label. Uh yeah. So um, I started a label like over a year ago and then I had found some investors and, and then nothing really happened with that. And so I'm uh, just working on it with Trent now, my boyfriend, and we want it to be like kind of the best way to compare it is with like a co-op building where everyone owns part of it and all kind of support each other and keep the thing going and um release artistic stuff on muted color yeah are you taking submissions yes so throw that out there on your iPhone, on the podcast <laughs> yeah what what kind of submissions what is what is what are you looking well i we're not really like keeping it as to a specific genre just like stuff that we like and and it's cool and um we want to just like build like an artist community because like so many people are just self-releasing music anyway, and it would just be cool to all be releasing through one place and have a cool group of artists on there and everyone owning a part of the company and everyone kind of cross promoting each other through muted color. Does that make sense? Yeah. How would an artist go about contacting you and figuring out whether or not a collaboration would work? Uh, I would say go to the Instagram account, which is just at muted color, M U T E D C O L O R. Not the British spelling. That was, that was a battle in my head. I was like, should it be color with a U or American color? I think you chose (laughs) correctly. Yeah. Yeah. Muted color. Um, yeah. Besides your label, you're now also a professional video gamer. Is that correct? (laughs) <laughs> Not quite yet, but uh, <laughs> my my friend Lene, uh, did you meet Lene yet? Yeah, at Trent's birthday. Oh, right, of course. What am I talking about? Yeah, um, the I forgot. So she's been doing Twitch, and she just kept saying like, "Let's do Twitch together," and blah blah blah. And so I've started doing that, and I'm trying to um, sign up for an actual partnership with Twitch. And can you explain to me what Twitch is? It's a, again, I'm still kind of learning it myself, but, um, it's just a platform where you can stream gaming and there's tons of games to choose from, but I've been playing Fortnite as of recently. You just like, you can interact with people and, you know, they kind of like chat with you while you're, you're gaming and it's very fun. Of Fortnite. I've never played. What is that like? Uh, I'm not totally into it yet. I I mean, I guess you can, you can like build stuff and you like can kind of battle with other people playing online and stuff. But like, I have a really bad mouse. I need to get a gamer's mouse because I have no aim every time that I try to shoot someone because you need to kind of like right click to properly aim and then left click to shoot. And right now I'm just shooting from the hip basically. Mm. And so then can I go on, can I watch you play Fortnite on Twitch? Is that what? Yeah, you have to download okay. Twitch and all that, though. Um, but the thing that's cool, though, is that, I mean, I like playing video games in general. But if you, 
you know, partner up with Twitch, you then can make money off of ad revenue of people that are visiting your page and stuff too. So it's another form of being able to make some money in this ridiculous world where being a creative is so difficult to make money. <laughs> and you can like wear funny costumes, tell jokes to people. I guess that's true. I sh maybe I should yeah. do that. I got to up, up my Twitch game. I've actually been playing a Nintendo Switch like crazy. Trent and I have been so obsessed. They have like a new Mario game. It's so good. Do you like video games? Uh, I used to play. I used to play Halo. Um, oh, nice. On tour? On tour, yeah. And, uh, but that was... Actually, you know what? That's the one memory I have with you guys on tour Like that's particularly strong in my mind is... I can't remember where... I think it was like in the U.S. somewhere... We came on your bus and we all played, uh, uh, what's it called? Um, Guitar Hero. Oh yeah, that sounds about right. I think we were, I think it was rock band. I think we were on a rock band tour. Rock band, yeah. that's what it was. Can I play Fortnite on my laptop? Yeah, that's right. I mean, I'm playing it on my computer. Okay. Let's play Fortnite together. I'll try. I did it with Lene the other day. It was definitely more fun to do it with a friend, but... It sucks because I just die right away. <laughs> so it's really frustrating. I like start getting some, getting far, like walking around the land and stuff like that and discovering stuff. And then someone will just sniper and kill me. And I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> Didn't even have a chance to get into it. Fortnite. There's some like zombie game or something. I think that I need to try out. I can't remember the name you, of it. You can play yeah. any game on Twitch. People just watch you, and then you... yeah, and you can also you can connect it to um, whatever. Like if you have a PS3 or Xbox, whatever, you can connect it and play through that as well and live stream Interesting. it. Interesting. It's pretty badass. Sounds fun. Yeah. You got to tell me if you get into it. We need to play sure. together. Was there anything else you want to broadcast to the world before we go? No, I guess that's pretty much it. Well, thank you very much for your time. Of course, I'm glad we got to talk. Did you enjoy that podcast? <laughs> I hope you did. I really do. Thank you for listening.